Hi everyone, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And we're here to uh, talk about the 25th annual Garden State Sheep Breeders Sheep and Fiber Festival, which we attended last weekend uh, in New Jersey, um, down in Ringos, New Jersey, so southern New Jersey. This is the pamphlet we got. Um, and this was a new event for us. We hadn't attended before, we hadn't vended before, um, but our friend Ann Choi, um, who we met at Maryland Fish Sheep and Wool Festival, what, two years ago, um, is one of the main coordinators for this event and has been trying to, um, I guess, just grow it and, you know, Especially see Especially from a fiber point of view, apparently this is more of a 4-H and Breeders Association, and she was hoping to get uh, more interest in the fiber and the sales part. Right. Yeah. So it's been a heavy focus on agricultural, which we like, um, but she was trying to get more vendors there. So uh, she kind of arm twisted us, um, but we were, we were willing participants. <laughs> yes, willing. And, uh, and what capped it off was her generous invitation to host us. Um, traveling to shows, there's just so many expenses, not just the booth fee, but, you know, your, your fuel costs and your meals and housing if you have to stay in a hotel. So that was very generous generous so uh thank you Anne and Mike and Mike <laughs> and the dog and everybody <laughs> yeah here. yeah so um so that was great and we really enjoyed our time there um I think we've lucked out in a big way with the weather apparently the last few years it's either been really hot or very rainy or very stormy um and there's not a lot of shelter um in, for vending you're either under a roofed structure but you don't have walls or you're just out in the open. Um, so we really lucked out with the weather. It was great. And it's a smaller festival. I would say it's it it feels even a little bit smaller than Vermont, which is not a big one. Did it feel that way to you? Um, differently because, no, actually I don't believe it did because mm. you had those four full barns that were over a long distance. And mm. I just felt like the Vermont sheep, well, maybe because it's a little bit more spread out, it feels a little differently sized but mm -hmm. are they smaller maybe but yeah maybe yeah, that's a good point yeah. yeah um not all the barns are filled with vendors there are also um a lot of educational activities going on so i know that some of the teachers um who were teaching classes were also giving kind of hands-on demonstrations so they were free um adaptations of what they were teaching in their classes there was of course an extended two days of sheep showing um, which I find incredibly educational and, and would have liked to see more of um, if we hadn't been so busy. Um, they had sheep sharing demonstrations. They had herding dogs yeah. demonstrations. So I think a great educational experience, especially if you are thinking about getting a small flock of your own or if you've just gotten sheep and you know maybe want some more information from some people who are more experienced, it would be a good way to, to go with that. Yeah, it felt a lot more intimate. The, um, the sheep... Uh judging arena it was very it was open so you can go all the way around it and you could see from all aspects mm -hmm. and i thought that was informative um with our show at the vermont uh, excuse me at the uh, the tunbridge world's fair previously uh you kind of were penned in almost on mm -hmm. two sides so you mm -hmm. can only see it from two sides from the grandstand this felt uh, a little more intimate okay yeah. that's good to know yeah, I didn't really get out of the booth very much. I will put some footage at the end because I did get to go around and see some of the other vendors and I just took a little video footage of their booths. Um, so I'll put those up and tag them in the, um, you know, put titles over the screen so you can see who's who. Um, but I didn't really get to see a lot of the events. They did have the herding dogs happening behind our building, so I got to hear a lot of that. Um, and that was really cool. The guy was talking about how they train the dogs and how you have to break the sheep in and get the sheep used to the dog, the dog used to the sheep. Um, so that's that's always interesting to watch. Yeah, they had a huge field behind the barns there, essentially mm -hmm. the length of four barns, and no fencing around it. And this guy had his sheep and the dogs without fencing around them. The sheep would chill out in the shade of the trees, mm -hmm. and then they would do a couple of demonstrations. It was very informative. It's very cool. Yeah. So, so and um, I know that they did, they did focus on some rare breed. Um, aspects to you know raising different breeds of sheep um they had uh i think they had some representatives from the american breed association or something along those lines because they had the shave them to save them um which you're, if you're not familiar with the, that's a 
um, initiative by the American Livestock Conservancy to raise rare breeds to get the um, sheep shorn in a timely manner and to make sure that that wool is really going back into production. So it's either going to make yarn or it's being sold to hand spinners. Um, and just to help educate people about the different kinds of fleeces yeah. that are available, different wool qualities, um, and help promote raising uh, endangered and rare breeds of sheep. So Yeah, I didn't get a good look, but there was that. a nice representation of the right breeds. I saw mm -hmm. Jacobs, I saw Baby Dolls, I saw Shetlands, yeah. uh, I saw Finns, I saw a whole bunch of different breeders there. It's mm -hmm. nice to see it uh, for a small scale at the, at the, uh, the pure diversity of the flocks. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm just looking to see what else that they had. Yeah, Icelandic, Romney, Scottish oh, Blackface, yeah. Suffolk, and the Valley Black Nose, which are um, not rare. I, I don't know that they're endangered worldwide, but they're definitely rare here. Um, those are the ones that look like little Moffat sheep. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, Tammy from Women of Prayer recently put yeah. some into her flock. Yep, yeah. exactly. They're I think really she's the cute. only one in Vermont that has them. Yeah, um, really cute. So anyway, uh, the Garden State Sheep Breeders, I would say, is is a definite recommend if you get a chance to go, particularly if you're interested in the livestock stuff. You know, this is not, it's not meant to be like a mini Rhinebeck or anything like that. It's really its own thing. Um, but uh, they have a lot of, you know, great educational activities. I saw a kids going around with uh, painted faces, so they have activities for children, too. Uh, right. And uh, you were mentioning the 4-H thing. One of the things I appreciated, even though we didn't take advantage of it, is the 4-H kids were also selling food and drink. And then they did a really good service is that they would go around to the vendors and essentially take orders like, mm -hmm. oh, you can't get out of your booth. Would you like a hamburger or a hot dog or maybe some cookies? Mm -hmm. And it was wise for them as far as their being able to raise money for their group. Um, but it was helpful because a lot of people don't always have a, uh, a person on hand to That's go right. to a food run or something. Like that. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I was originally going to do this event by myself, um, and I'm really glad that I didn't have to. At the last minute, Rick stepped up and said, you know, I should really do this event with you. And uh, he's absolutely right. Um, just setting up the tent and, and lifting and loading, I can do all that stuff. But after a six-hour drive, you know, by yourself and then having to do all that, I think I would have been just wiped out. Um, so thank you. No, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm always, always happy to help. I enjoy yeah, the fun. drives. I enjoy that aspect of the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the road trip and uh, it's nice to meet new people i really enjoy being in the booth talking to people yeah you know? yeah exactly and uh and hey more knitting time car knitting time for me um speaking of which i will show you what i purchased nice segue thanks <laughs> we do this a few times you start to like think of things to say no um so the first uh, booth I went by was Katrinkles, and I've talked to her, uh, talked about her on the podcast before. She um, has a laser cutting machine, and she's branched out from doing um, wooden objects to leather and um, some acrylics and all kinds of stuff. Um, but she makes um, both decorative and functional items. So the decorative item I got from her this year was she always does a commemorative stitch marker for the event. Sorry to block your face. <laughs> Um, a commemorative stitch marker for the event. So this one says New Jersey Sheep and Fiber Festival 2019. And it's got a little picture of New Jersey on there. And then the functional one, I'll give you a second to try and guess what this is. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> um, this is called a ring distaff. So you put your finger in here. And the idea is when you're spindle spinning, you can gather all of your roving onto the distaff. You kind of wrap it around. And then you have your two hands free to do your, your drafting for your drop spindling. Um, often I will wrap it around my arm, but that will, that will fall off or it will get tangled in a weird way or it'll get, if it's, if it's hot, then I'm like sweaty and sticky. So this is a really nice alternative to all of that. Um, and I like her little, her little design. She put a bird on it. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to using this. Thank you, Katie. Um, Not pictured. Uh, Katie also uh, made some name tags for us that we have with oh, magnets right. on the back that really came in handy at this event. Not putting holes in her our fine sweaters and things, although it was a little too warm to wear our, our woolen goods. Right, but we were dressed up, and uh, 
and the reusable name tags. Um, I've been using the, the kind of cheesy plastic ones for quite a while, so it's nice to have customized ones yeah. with our logo and all that. So if thanks, you, Katie. yeah, thanks, Katie. If you run any kind of business, do any kind of event, whether it's craft related or something completely different, um, if your aesthetic is kind of this like handmade wooden sort of thing, if that works with your branding, I would say definitely look up Katrinkles, um, and I will list her website in the show notes. And she does all kinds of customized things. Signage. We have a little tabletop yeah. sign because um, we're trying to cut down on business cards. Um, so we have a lot of different things from her. So Yeah, that came in. That was well received. You have a little mm. sign that says keep in touch or keep in connect with us. And it has all of our different uh, social media sites, etc. And people, do you have a card? I'm like, no, we let, you can take a picture of this. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, that makes so much more sense. And yeah. I, and I think appreciated it. People yeah. liked well, it for the most part. Yeah. 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 So that was cool. Um... So that was Katie, and then a couple of new to me vendors. Um, the one that I had my eye on from the outset was Marionated Yarns, and I got this grouping of things. Um, the light's kind of blowing this bigger skein out, but this is an off, it's just a dusty blue. There we go, I'll cover my own face. It's a dusty blue, blue gray, there we go. And then these three accent skeins to go with it. And um, thank you. Um, I got these specifically to make uh, a pattern. It's by Adriana Bon. Um, she goes by Nano Adri on Instagram. And I don't think she has very many published patterns, but she's um, published this one called In Bloom. It's, an, it's a hat and it's color work. Um, and it's really pretty. And it uses, you know, one main color and then three accents. So that is what I'm going to use for my in bloom hat and I might I might have enough to make two or at least be able to make a baby hat or something this is super wash yarn I believe yeah it is um, what is fun for me is that this has a little bit of cashmere in it it's a merino cashmere nylon or MCN blend and um, it's my first time using the cashmere yarn so thank you Marion it was also nice to meet Marion in person after following her and her work for quite a while and chat with her a little bit. She's really yeah, sweet, sweet <laughs> laid back, very approachable person. Her booth was crazy busy, but she had about four helpers and I always appreciate that. If you know that you're gonna be a popular vendor at a show, having enough helpers that can really talk to people, help them sort out their color choices, get them checked out in a timely manner. Because if you're vending and you're trying to buy from other people, then it can be kind of a drag to have to stand in line, so. I'm smirking because you said helpers, but their their actual name tags say yarn enabler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of... We will help you spend money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so Hi, Rick, yarn enabler. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. It's I like Whatever. I like that a lot. Yeah, it does work. Um, so yes, the yarn enablers were fantastic at her booth. And um, then the other Ooh, place that cool. I got yarn from, and I was not expecting to buy any more yarn. That was really what I had budgeted. Um, but these folks we got to talking with them. They're the Sheep's Clothing Yarn Company. And it's just a husband and wife team. Based out of Philadelphia. Yep. Yeah. And they dye these different colors. I guess she does most of the dyeing and he helps with some of the marketing and um, co-vending. But he was walking around working on a sock. <laughs> and so of course, you know, that's a good conversation starter. So we got to talk a bit and um, ended up kind of liking each other's stuff so we ended up doing a trade which was really nice. Um, I really like the skein because it has this beautiful rose color here. Um, it's more saturated in person. Then it goes into a violet and then it ends in a beautiful gold. And I'm trying to incorporate like more oranges and yellows into my wardrobe. I've kind of shied away from those shades for a long time but I actually think they look pretty good on me so I'm trying to incorporate more stuff um, get out of my comfort zone. And since I wear blue all the time, yellow and, and orange also go with blue really well. Um, oh, and this was the other thing I got from Marionated. This is not her t-shirt design though. This is by Tao of Nerdburn Makery. She's out in Oregon, Portland area, I believe. Um, and she does all kinds of yarn and fiber related things. Some are kind of craftivist activist messages, which I really appreciate. Um, some are kind of, what do I want to say, punk rock a little bit. <laughs> but this one is just cute. It says fuel up on fiber 
And then I don't know if you can tell, but all, each of the items is made out of yarn instead of whatever it is. So cute. this is cute. Yeah. And so and so um, Marianne had the uh, towels, a couple of her things, including some of her bags and things in her booth. So that was a great treat because it's hard to buy stuff online sometimes. You don't know exactly what color it is or you don't know if the size is going to work or whatever. So good collaboration that way. Um, yeah, that was it for purchases. Um, oh, except for the beer. So we I was about to say, about this. she got all that. I came back <laughs> with some beer. Well, <laughs> we, we came back with some beer. Yeah. So um, Sunday after we finished up the event, uh, we went in search of some takeaway food, and we were going to be meeting back with Ann and Mike and, and uh, Nancy and others back at the house. And we stopped by a little can and bottle store, and I was just – it was overwhelming. There were thousands mm. of things in this store. Um, so I was mostly just trying to find something as local as possible. And this is from Carton Brewing. And as you can see, East Coast Double India IPA. Carton Brewing. Yep. And then there's the style. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's, it's, I think it's from Flemington. Let me see. It's a uh, Canton, I'm sorry, Carton Brewing is in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Um, so I was just looking for something from New Jersey and looking for something in a style that would go well with Thai food and uh, the, uh, this really fit the bill. So mm -hmm. we have, yeah. we saved a little bit. Save one can time. so we yeah. could drink it during the podcast. We haven't been talking much. And it's nice. It's got these nice little tight bubbles. It's a very tasty mm -hmm. West Coast style, uh, yep. a little bitter at the end, but... It's got a creamy um, yeah. body to it, but it's not a sweet IPA. It's more of a hoppy one. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, yeah it's delicious. I like it a lot. So good find that way. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Carton Brewery for quenching our thirst. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So we really enjoyed it. And it's kind of a funny, Southern New Jersey is kind of, I don't know, it's interesting. You've got like the commuter belt into New York, and so you have these big... From palatial places. Um, well, it's also where we were is very close to the state capital. And mm -hmm. it's also very close then across the river to Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. And in fact, when we went looking for food on Sunday, we accidentally ended up in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Which oh, right. Is, <laughs> Just, speaking of crafts and arts and things, that is such oh, a yeah. beautiful little village. And I'd like to get back there again sometime. But yeah. it was just a... Uh, Swimming with tourists at the time. It was, yeah. yeah. That's I, I have trouble with it because I'm sure there's like some really great, you know, genuine, handmade, beautiful stuff. But it's also got like the cutesy, craftsy thing going on and like tons of tourists. So it's almost like you want to go in the off season, but then I don't mm. even know if stuff's open. So it is open in the off season. And one time I went before you and I met. Actually, mm. I went with a friend up, and it was to, she wanted to go up for uh, Christmas shopping. Oh, okay. So we went up in December just for the sense. day with a friend of mine uh, you know, yeah. a couple of decades ago. And I've always wanted to go back and mm -hmm. accidentally did. And maybe we'll have to go. Maybe Whoops, next time. we can't find parking. Okay, we're out of here. Well, there, there's a target if we are fortunate enough to oh, attend next year. If we decide to attend the uh, the Garden State again, we mm -hmm. will uh, make a point of going over to New Hope and maybe uh, seeing yeah. what there is there. That's a good plan. We can take you with us. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the Garden State Sheep Breeders, um, again, especially if you're interested in the live animals, the yeah. sheep. Um, there were angora rabbits, there were goats, I didn't see any camelids, no llamas or alpacas that I saw, did I? I, I didn't I don't remember. see any, I didn't see any alpacas, mm -hmm. but I saw lots of vendors selling alpaca things who said, asked yes. me about alpacas, so they seem to be breeders, um, but for whatever reason, they didn't, it didn't seem that they were being included uh, mm -hmm. In the show, for as far as animals, right? Concerned. Well, it does say sheep breeders on the yeah. <laughs> on the program, so yeah. that's that's fair enough. But yeah, it's a it's a fun festival. Um, they do uh, they do encourage carpooling by having you yeah, um, cool. pay by the car load, so that was yeah. really good. Load up your car with friends, and it's like instead mm -hmm. of five dollars per person, it's like fifteen for a whole car. Mm -hmm. So load it up. I mean, it's it, it, because. It really would be nice to get more people to this event. It was yeah. great fun. And there's a lot of room there. You don't feel like you're going to be uh, packed in. No. There's a lot of open space. No. The only warning I'll give you is that there's no flush toilets. So you've got porta potties and hand puppy stations, which is fine. Yeah. They kept them clean. They, yeah. they refresh them pretty regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, they had a nice fleece show. Mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned uh, the, uh, a couple of friends, uh, including a new uh, new friend, Nancy, uh, were doing both demonstrations and classes. Mm -hmm. And it was quite informative. I listened in a little bit on a couple of those things. So. Yeah. 
And Rick keeps mentioning Nancy, so I'll just say, hi, getting pearly with it. We uh, we really enjoyed meeting Nancy Ricci and, and getting to know her more, more personally than just online. So um, if you have a chance to take a class with her, I know she's, you know, looking to expand her instruction offerings. Um, definitely check out her, you know, what she's got going on in the next year or so. I think it's some exciting stuff that she has planned. So we'll link to her website as well. Well, um, but yeah, other than that, it was just a, a nice little festival. We really enjoyed it and we're planning to go back next year. Yeah, it was nice. It was uh, half the distance of Maryland, mm -hmm. and we, it's that, it was bucolic area, really nice area of friends, and we'll, we'll be back. Love yeah. to be back. Oh, and a big thank you to everybody who came by and said hi. Some of you oh, from Instagram introduced yourselves, nice. and that was really sweet. Um, we got hugs. I did post some photos earlier in the week from some of the people that I met, but I didn't get pictures with everybody, or I didn't remember everybody's name exactly correctly, so... Apologies for that. I do have to get better at, you know, taking notes of everybody that we got to meet. Um, but that's always fun, and I always encourage you to come up and say hi. Yeah. And uh, and thank you, too, for buying all the sock links. That was oh, incredible. Nice. I've never sold out of a product before. <laughs> this really... is a historic occasion. So yeah. I'm glad you like the eco-printed sock links, and we have just been making more this week. So we'll have more at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival coming up in three weeks from in three weeks yeah it'll be um the first weekend in october uh this year at the tunbridge fairgrounds in beautiful tunbridge vermont so definitely check that one out as well um it's again it's a smaller scale uh venue it's around five thousand people that attend so it's not nearly as crowded as some of these bigger shows and i think a lot more accessible and some of the same vendors that you'll see at the bigger shows do come to vermont so yeah. it's a great way to kind of you know, be able to see them um, and not feel so squished or rushed or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely come by and say hi. We'll be in the pavilion. We yeah. always love meeting you guys. We do. We do. It's the best part of doing these shows is meeting people. So thanks again uh, for tuning in and stay tuned. We'll have more for you.